Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve. Good day. Welcome to part two of my uh, camera project for a small format pinhole camera that shoots little squares of Harman direct positive paper. And if you remember the previous video, which I'll link down below, I had a set or have a set of these nine little film canister uh, pinhole cameras that uh, each have a square of uh, Harman direct positive paper uh, sized inch and three quarters and uh, they're really beautiful little prints but since I've been starting to work with this I've decided I'd like to build another system that uses a little bit larger format of uh, image and um, so thinking about all this I have decided uh, that for several reasons I would go with the two and a half inch size format. Now the reason why I chose two and a half inch, it's considerably larger than the inch and three quarter. Uh, it's still diminutive, small, intimate size. You can put it in the palm of your hand, but uh, the main advantage is I can still make very efficient use of an eight by ten inch sheet of paper cutting these out. And having gone through a lot of different design iterations in my head and sketch journals and whatnot, I've decided that I'm going to employ a, a film format that uses an 8 inch uh, wide strip of photo paper cut down from an 8 by 10 inch sheet. And this is going to have three images side by side. And I'm going to make a camera that has three compartments. But the one uh, significant feature of it I think that's going to be important is it's only going to have one pinhole. And the pinhole is going to be removable and you can move it from one camera to the other. The shutter will be behind the pinhole. So there's been quite a bit of interest in the feedback in the comments to the previous video about this project and I was really excited about all the ideas that you guys had and it reminds me that since I've been uh, designing homemade pinhole cameras since the mid 1990s I have filled sketch journals full of like, all kinds of crazy ideas some of them more practical than others but I really like some of the ideas you guys have I probably won't be able to incorporate all those ideas in this one camera design because each idea kind of it requires sometimes its own separate project to to build but uh, this particular uh, a camera project originated as I had indicated earlier with this nine camera kit and you have to make nine individual pinhole cameras with nine nearly identical pinholes so the exposure times are consistent between camera to camera uh, and once you have that though when you go out in the field you have nine shots to make uninterrupted you don't have to stop and reload the cameras or anything one of the other aspects of this camera design is I was using containers, reusing containers that are already sitting around, in this case film canisters. But of course these little film capsules are too small for a two and a half inch size film format. And it would either be try to find some other kind of container uh, that I can reuse as a camera or I'll have to build my own camera. Now one idea I had for emulating the film canister ideal on a slightly larger basis is if you go find some PVC plumbing caps and pipe at the hardware store. Now this was designed originally not as a camera but as a storage system for used rolls of medium format film. Uh, they are kind of light sensitive if you get bright light around the edges of the spool. Uh, but so this is obviously white PVC pipe and it's not light tight so I ended up spray painting it but you can actually get these plumbing caps in the gray type of PVC uh, you know and so you have what is this about an inch size pipe roughly and some caps you would have to drill holes with a drill press or a power drill in the side to put your pinhole on a little shutter of tape or whatever so that is doable the thing is though if you figure the cost of these plumbing caps if you wanted to make 12 cameras, let's say, you need 24 plumbing caps, and that's probably over 20 bucks right there, plus a power drill. So it is doable, uh, but uh, I, and I might still make that eventually. Also, you can use, of course, larger size uh, pipe. Anyway, so there's a lot of different ideas out there. You could spend your whole life, uh, as I have a lot of my adult life, building different pinhole cameras. But this particular design that I'm gonna be working on is gonna be using three compartments and I'm going to be initially prototyping this camera system in this gray chipboard cardboard and uh, so I've started on this project already 
And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the main camera body like this, and then there is gonna be like a little cardboard slip that the sheets of photo paper, the strips of photo paper slip into, and it'll have three windows. And that particular, and then of course a back lid to the camera will uh, open, will seal it up. And then there will be, this is the side view, that little holder for the paper will slip into the front, the back of the camera, there'll be a protective flap covering the light from leaking into the top side of the holder. And then the lid goes on to make your completed camera. And that's kind of been how I've been working on this. I've been thinking about how to build the shutters and uh, so what I have is a dual layer of cardboard so you have a little u-shaped piece with a tongue that is your shutter and that's mounted up against the front of the box and then there is a square window mat spacer with a square hole and then you have another u-shaped piece for your pinhole piece and then a square piece in front of that and so it makes a stack of four layers uh, with two slots on the top. The rear slot is for your shutter, the front slot is for the pinhole, and I intend on having the little tongue that slips in here for the shutter, I intend on having it to be longer or taller than the one for the pinhole so you can easily remove either one. Based on all these requirements and based on the size of the film and all this stuff, I had to sit down and get some really detailed uh, measurements on how I'm going to do this. And so what I've decided is I'm, I'm going to be using laminations of the thin cardboard. Three layers of the cardboard makes about an eighth of an inch. And so I have my front piece with the square openings. I have the side pieces that will make up the side of the box. And then three layers laminated in here. And what I'm doing with that is I'm making a little recess. Uh, for the film to sit on. Let's see if I have a drawing of that. I guess I do right here. Inside the camera you have these three layers that are an eighth of an inch shorter than the actual side of the camera so it makes a little eighth inch ledge in the back of the camera that the film holder cardboard thing will sit on uh, to define the film plane. And so the cardboard holder itself is going to have the window mats in it and it'll have a little slip, a little opening where the paper can slip down into it from the top. So I've been uh, working here on the kitchen table for <laughs> since last night. I started with making the little shutter and uh, pinhole slips, the little layered stacks here. So you can see then probably there's four layers of cardboard making two slots in there and you'll have of course the shutter slot will be toward the camera and the pinhole slot will be in front of it so I only need to use one pinhole uh, for all three camera chambers which means my exposures are going to be uh, identical because the dimensions of the camera on all three sim uh, chambers should be identical. Here's the inside of the uh, front of the camera and the openings are three-eighths of an inch square and I've darkened the edges of all the cardboard with just a black marker pen just to eliminate reflections. And so from there we go to the actual body, the side pieces that make up the camera. And these are an inch deep, the outer body pieces. And then I have laminated seven eighths of an inch deep pieces, or seven eighths wide, three layers of it. And this cardboard is very flexible, as I'll show you. You can bend it real easy. But once you glue with wood glue, the three layers together, clamp it and let it dry. Once you do that, the cardboard becomes very stiff, almost like plywood. So you'll see now that I have this little eighth inch ledge, eighth of an inch deep, and it sticks out about an eighth of an inch all around the perimeter of the camera. And my film holder will go sit right in that flush, and then the back of the camera is gonna fit over on top of it. Here are the shutter, the front of the camera and the sides and back of the camera kind of fit on it like that as you can see and I'm going to be gluing the side pieces to the front of the camera I'll just be gluing it along the edge here and then when the glue is cured I'm going to reinforce all the corners here and all the edges 
with gaffer's tape, black gaffer's tape. That's going to give some reinforcement to the camera and also it'll, it'll help seal up any light leaks. And, and it'll make it slightly weatherproof, a little more rugged, I'm hoping. Um, and of course, in the joints inside the camera, I intend on filling up any gaps with glue. And I haven't really decided if I'm going to paint the inside of the, of the camera because the problem is that some of the paints, like acrylic paints, when they make the cardboard wet, they actually cause the cardboard to start warping just like if you wetted a piece of paper. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that. I might use a magic marker and just seal up the corners at least uh, after I uh, glue them and after the glue dries. But the uh, gaffer's tape is going to also provide some light, tight integrity on the outside of it. You know, what's fascinating about camera building is when you define the problem, the camera project as a problem to solve, in this case, two and a half inch square uh, pinhole cameras with equal size pinholes, etc., etc. When you define all that, uh, there's a number of different solutions that you can come up with from very simple to very complicated mechanically. And that's what's so fun about this whole camera building thing is there's so many different solutions to one individual problem. And uh, this is a fairly simple camera. Now, let's talk about in actual use how I'm going to use this camera. Um, so it is a three-chambered camera and it will require a strip of paper to be loaded into the camera ahead of time in the darkroom at home. Uh, however, if I want to shoot more than three exposures out in the field, I'm going to have to have a little carrying container, a light tight container with additional strips of paper. In a, and from one 8x10 sheet of paper, you can get four of these strips, so eight, 12 exposures total. Uh, I'll have to carry a, a little bag uh, or a little pouch, like a light tight pouch, with the additional pieces of paper and in a changing bag. So every three shots, I'll have to sit down, find a place to sit, and exchange out the paper, put the camera in the changing bag, put my arms in the sleeves, open it up, and uh, do the switch out. Now, that sounds a little... Um, inconvenient, and it is to some degree, but it's not nearly as inconvenient as if you had a one-shot camera that you had to change out the pictures every time between shots in a changing bag because you're constantly having to sit down, unzip the bag, put your stuff in, zip it up, put your arms in it. It's just a constant hassle. You're constantly zipping and unzipping and having to find a place to sit down. So this will be somewhat inconvenient, but not as much. Now, I had thought about when I was first designing this camera, I was thinking about making the back of the camera thicker and the little film holder, little cardboard sleeve that holds a piece of paper, I was thinking about building a storage slot behind it that has additional paper, you know, the unexposed and exposed sheets. And um, I could actually still do that. I could have the film holder stick up further behind the camera and then just build a different back that slips on it to make it light tight. I could still do that, but this is really just a uh, prototype proof of concept design. I was originally intending maybe to be building the final version of this out of model aircraft plywood and a lot nicer construction techniques, but the uh, use of, you know, the precise cutting of this cardboard requiring, you know, a razor knife, like an X-Acto knife, and careful measurements, and a, a cutting mat, and all this. It is a quite an um, involved process just to make an accurate cardboard camera that uh, it's almost like, well, this sort of is very intricately made, and it is almost a finished camera. So the big question for me is going to be how I'm going to finish the outside of the camera. I don't want to paint it because I don't think the cardboard holds up to being wetted very well with paint. I might find some adhesive shelf liner or I might even do something crazy like you could put epoxy glue. You could cover the entire outside with epoxy glue, epoxy resin, which might be interesting. That might actually work. I've also tried like varnish, you know, uh, polyurethane varnish on cardboard, but sometimes it when it wets the cardboard, it causes it to warp and just like when paper gets wet, it kind of distorts it. So that's not necessarily a good idea, but perhaps, uh, or maybe a spray, a spray varnish. So anyways, there's several options for this, but this might end up being more of a finished final camera. And it's interesting though, when you do glue these uh, three layers of chipboard cardboard together, 
and then clamp them between uh, pieces of wood with clamps. When you do that, and after you let the glue cure, it really does get pretty rigid. I mean, it's surprising how rigid it is compared to the original cardboard. So. Okay, I took a break to eat lunch and watch the uh, SpaceX Falcon Heavy launch. How was that? So, I have the uh, front of the camera and I've put my guidelines down to where the division uh, dividers between the cells and on the edge of the frame will intersect. And then I've uh, made some dividers. These are three layer laminations of cardboard and glue. So they're about an eighth of an inch thick. I've marked those same lines on the front. I marked them on the top and bottom pieces and I've glued them. The dividers carefully in place and now I'm drying the uh, dividers uh, or drying the glue and I have some rubber bands clamped on there just to provide pressure to it. And when those things cure I'll be able to uh, take this and uh, glue the whole side of the camera, the whole, all the vertical parts to the front. Well, I had to clean off the kitchen table and get ready for dinner tonight, so I had to move out to the garage here. But hey, basically I have the front of the camera and the, all the attachment pieces glued together. I have these glue fillets around the perimeter that's uh, hardening up right now, and hopefully when those are done, then the inside corners and edges can be maybe painted or maybe I can put some magic marker, some kind of dark colored stuff that doesn't uh, cause the uh, cardboard to warp, whatever. But anyway, so the camera body itself is coming together. I still need to make the shutter pieces in the uh, one pinhole insert. And then I need to build the uh, cardboard holder for the paper and the back of the camera that just basically slips over the entire camera on the outside of it to seal it up. Anyway, this is an unfinished project. It's ongoing. There'll be, of course, a part three in a week or two when I make more progress on this. But this is just an update. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day and stay creative and keep taking photographs.